Today, guys, we're going to be talking about America's 10 most dangerous highways. In an article that I recently came across by a website called The Zebra, they listed the top 10 most dangerous highways in America. We're going to take a look at this list, and I'll give my thoughts about the highways on the list and personal experiences while traveling on some of them. First things first, the methodology that the Zebra used to compile this list was from the National Highway and Safety Transportation Association and the Fatality Analysis Reporting System, or FARS. They broke it down by fatalities per 100 miles based on 2019 data. The article will be linked in the description if you want to check it out. At number 10 on the list is not only the most surprising, but also the only non-interstate highway on the list, US-41. US-41 is a major north-south highway that runs from Miami, Florida to the UP of Michigan. Along the way, it passes through major cities such as Tampa, Atlanta, Nashville, Chicago, and Milwaukee. As is the case with many US highways, US-41 does not have a certain standard for its length. It can range from a two-lane rural highway, such as through the Florida Everglades, to a major surface boulevard, to a quasi-freeway in Lakeshore Drive through Chicago, to an actual freeway in concurrency with interstate highways such as Interstate 41 in Wisconsin. According to the article, US-41 had 141 fatalities in 2019 and 7.02 fatalities per 100 miles. Many of the fatalities on US-41 can be attributed to the snow and ice on the northern end of the route and the portion through the Tampa Bay area, as Hillsborough County is known for having the highest traffic fatality rate in the entire country. Number 9 on the list is Interstate 80. Interstate 80 is a transcontinental interstate highway that stretches all the way from the New York City area to San Francisco, California. It is the second longest interstate highway in the entire country, only behind Interstate 90. Other cities along the route include Cleveland, Chicago, Toledo, Des Moines, Iowa, Salt Lake City, Reno, and Sacramento. I-80 had a total of 209 fatalities in 2019 and a rate of 7.21 fatalities per 100 miles. With the routing of Interstate 80, it's safe to say that a majority of its fatalities are concentrated in the New York, Chicago, and San Francisco metro areas. During winter months, icy weather in the Chicago, Cleveland, and New York areas can be credited with the increase in fatalities. Number eight is Interstate 70, another long, almost coast-to-coast -coast interstate. I-70 runs from I-15 near Cove Fort, Utah, to its humble ending at a parking ride just inside the Baltimore city limits on the East Coast. It is the fifth longest interstate highway and runs through cities such as Denver, Topeka, Kansas, Kansas City, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Columbus, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore. I-70 had 158 fatalities in 2019 at a rate of 7.35 per 100 miles. A famous stretch of I-70 is a section in Colorado. The section in Glenwood Canyon in particular was not completed until 1992 and goes through some of the most difficult terrain in the entire interstate highway system. It features several steep grades along with some sharp corners that aren't in line with typical interstate standards. Outside of Colorado, I-70 serves as the main east-west freeway through many of the cities it passes through which likely increases its fatality rate due to those urban stretches in St. Louis, Kansas City, Columbus, and Indianapolis. The number seven highway is one that I'm very familiar with personally, Interstate 40. Interstate 40 is a transcontinental interstate highway stretching from Wilmington, North Carolina to Barstow, California. It passes through cities along the way such as the Raleigh and Durham Triangle area, the Greensboro, Winston-Salem area, Knoxville, Nashville, Memphis, Little Rock, Oklahoma City, Amarillo, Texas, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. I actually traveled this highway in its near entirety back in the day, driving my car from my home state of North Carolina to my duty station in Southern California. A famous quote from CBS journalist Charles Curell, upon completion of I-40 in 1990 stated, thanks to the interstate highway system, it is now possible to travel from coast to coast without seeing anything. I can confirm those sentiments as once you pass Memphis, this highway becomes significantly more desolate and empty. The Zebra article listed 253 fatalities for 2019, along with a rate of 9.89 per 100 miles. While I-40 doesn't go through as many large metro areas as some of the other highways, it does pass through a lot of difficult terrain, particularly through the Great Smoky Mountains of North Carolina and Tennessee, where rock slides are common and can make the road treacherous or even impassable at times. I-40 is also one of the heaviest truck corridors in the U.S. and the midst of vehicles can contribute to the fatality rate. At number six on the list, Interstate 15, 
a major north-south interstate highway going from San Diego, California to the Canadian border at Sweetgrass, Montana. Along the way, I-15 passes through the Inland Empire portion of the Greater Los Angeles region, Las Vegas, and Salt Lake City, Utah. I-15 had 158 total fatalities and a rate of 11.02 per 100 miles. Upon first glance, one would notice that I-15 is much shorter than the east-west interstates on the list so far, and also only travels through a few large metro areas in comparison. The high fatality rate is likely due to the California portion of the route. I-15 travels through mountainous terrain between San Diego and the Inland Empire, experiences heavy traffic in the area, and then proceeds to a long and dangerous stretch between here and Las Vegas. North of Las Vegas, things quiet down significantly and it becomes a route less traveled. It's been a while since I drove on I-15, but that section in the Inland Empire was one that I often dreaded driving. Now we move on to the top five. Starting it out is Interstate 35, another major north-south route ending in five. It runs from the Mexican border in Laredo, Texas to Duluth, Minnesota. Along the way, it passes through the major metros of San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Des Moines, Iowa, and the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. I-35 had 137 fatalities in 2019 and a rate of 12.56 fatalities per 100 miles. The zebra says that the big contributors to I-35 stats are that it goes through all of the largest cities in Texas outside of Houston and carries a very heavy amount of truck traffic, being a near border-to-border -border interstate highway. One thing of note is that it is the only interstate that travels through Austin, a fast-growing city of over 800,000 people so it is likely attracting a lot of drivers in that area. Next up is another interstate that I'm quite familiar with, and that is Interstate 75. I-75 covers a large amount of territory from the Miami Metro in South Florida to the Canadian border in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Along this route are the major areas of Fort Myers in Sarasota, Florida, Tampa, Atlanta, Cincinnati, and Detroit. I-75 had a total of 237 fatalities in 2019 and a rate of 13.27 per 100 miles. The zebra attributed a large amount of those fatalities to icy winter conditions in Michigan and the portions of I-75 on the west coast of Florida. Fort Myers and Sarasota were mentioned, along with Tampa being the worst of all, with Hillsborough County, which contains Tampa being cited as the most dangerous county in the entire country. Surprisingly, the Atlanta area wasn't mentioned along with the Florida portion. With some of the crazy driving I've seen in Atlanta, it speaks volumes to how much worse the driving must be on the Florida stretch of I-75. Now to number three. We are back on the West Coast and it is none other than the main highway of the West Coast, Interstate 5. Interstate 5 travels from border to border, the Mexican border in San Diego to the Canadian border in Blaine, Washington. Along the way, it passes through or near major metro areas such as San Diego, Los Angeles, the San Francisco Bay Area, Sacramento, Portland, and Seattle. I-5 had 186 fatalities in 2019 and 13.47 fatalities per 100 miles. As with I-15, the majority of I-5's fatalities occur in California. The portion in San Diego County was cited as the most dangerous section along with sections in the Los Angeles and Sacramento areas being major contributors. Being an interstate that fully runs between each international border, I-5 also carries a large amount of truck traffic. And the zebra says this adds quite a bit to the auto fatalities. At number two, we are almost done, and the highway in question is Interstate 20. Interstate 20 runs from I-95 in Florence, South Carolina, to its western end at I-10 in West Texas. I-20 runs through Columbia, South Carolina, Atlanta, Birmingham, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi, Shreveport, Louisiana, and the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. I-20 had 208 total fatalities and 13.52 per 100 miles, just barely beating out I-5. The zebra cited high traffic areas such as Dallas, Jackson, and Atlanta as major contributors to its fatality rate. While it might be surprising to see a smaller metro like Jackson on the list, I can confirm that the stretch of I-20 through that area is quite constrained, pothole filled, and felt very unsafe compared to most other highways, so I can see why things might be deadly in that area. Birmingham, on the other hand, was noticeably absent, which may possibly be due to the recent widening and improvements on I-20 through that area. Who would have thought it would be safer to drive in Alabama than Texas? Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the only well-known highway left at this point to no one's surprise, the mighty Interstate 95. Coming in at number one on the list, I-95 travels up the U.S. East Coast from the tropical palm trees in downtown Miami to the icy forests of Holton, Maine. 
at the Canadian border. I-95 carries more traffic than any other highway and travels through or near more populated areas than any other highway by far. After Miami, it runs through Jacksonville, Florida, Savannah, Georgia, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Richmond, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York City, and Boston before calming back down to a quiet freeway through Maine. I-95 clocked in at number one in both total fatalities and fatality rate, with 284 fatalities and 14.88 per 100 miles. In addition to the sheer density of population that I-95 serves, the zebra says that much of the deadliness on I-95 can be attributed to icy conditions in the northeast winters and drivers on the east coast of Florida, particularly in Jacksonville and Brevard County. I noticed that I-95 in South Carolina wasn't mentioned, but perhaps that's because on that section of I-95, you'll be barely moving due to all the congestion. Personally, my last trip on I-95 in South Carolina involved sitting in stop-and-go traffic from the I-26 junction all the way to the Georgia state line. Time to step your game up, South Carolina. All right, guys, there we have it, the most dangerous highways in America. Were you surprised by any of the highways on the list or by the order? What has been your experience driving on these routes? Are there any highways that you were surprised to see didn't make the list? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next trip. Coming soon to a town near you.